everyone welcome back to technon tech tv in this tutorial we're going to discuss about different data types of java with its practical example so let's start in computer science data is information that is stored or processed by a computer while that might seem fairly abstract there are many data points we use in everyday life your name your age the number of flowers in your garden whether your kitchen light is on or off these can all be considered pieces of data and we represent pieces of data in code using data type similar to other programming languages java classifies different pieces of data with the data types based on their value for example there is a data type for letters and symbols and there are various data types for numbers ultimately a data type provides a set of possible values and if a piece of data is one of these values it is uh, classified as that uh, specific type so java separates uh, its data types into two main categories primitive data types and non primitive data types so primitive data type is predefined by the programming language the size and type of variable values are specified and it has no additional methods and non primitive data types are not actually defined by the programming language but are created by the programmer so they are also called uh, reference variables or object references since they reference a memory location which stores the data we'll talk about reference types in a later lesson diving deeper into primitive uh, types so primitive data types in java are classified into four aspects as uh, int float character and boolean but in general there are eight data types so you can refer to this figure to understand the different data types with respect to the memory allocated to them now let's understand each of these data types in depth first i will tell you what is a boolean data type so boolean data type comprises of a bit of information and can store only true or false values This data type is used to track true false conditions. Now let's write a small program and understand how it works. So for Java variable I am assigning true value and for Python I am assigning value as false. Now let's print both the variable values. So for this line output will be true and for this output uh, will be false. Now let's run the program. So here you can see the output. So that was all about the boolean data type. I hope you understood it. Now let's move further and understand the next data type that is byte data type. Byte data type is an uh, 8 bit signed to s complement integer it stores whole numbers that uh, lie between -128 to 127 a byte data type is helpful for saving memory in large amounts now let's uh, write a small program and understand how it works so here i am declaring two variable a and b of byte data type and uh, here i am assigning value 125 to variable a and 178 to variable b so this statement will print value of a that is 125 and this line will throw an error because it store more than 127 bits So if we run this program we'll get this error because variable b is storing more than 127 bits so let's comment this line and uh, now if we try to run then uh, value of variable a will be displayed now let's move on to uh, next data type that is char data type so this data type is used to store a single character the character must be enclosed within single quotes like uh, e in upper case or e in lower case you can also use ascii values to display certain characters let's take a small example and see how it works so here i am declaring variable character and assigning value m to it and also on the next line i am declaring variable a b and c and passing ascii value that is um, 65 66 and 67 and let's try to print this
now let's run the program so here we can see the output so here we have used sky values to display certain characters now let's move further and understand the next data type on the list that is short data type so short data type is uh, greater than byte in terms of size and less than a integer it stores the value that range from minus 32768 to 32767 the default size of this data type is 2 uh, bytes so let's take an example so here it will print the value uh, present in n variable that is 1 2 3 4 5 Now let's run the program. So here we can see the output. Moving ahead, let's move further and look at the next data type that is int data type. So this data type can store whole number from this to this value. Generally, int is uh, the preferred data type when you create variables with a numeric value. So here it will print the value uh, present in n variable. Now let's run the program. So here we can see the output. Next is a long data type. It is a 64 bit two s complement integer. By default, the size of a long data type is 64 bit, and its value ranges from two uh, raised to 63 to two raised to 63 minus one. Now let's see uh, the example. So note that you should end the value with an letter. l so if you don't write like this then you will get uh, error or you will see the warning now let's run the program so here it will print the value uh, present in n variable so here we can see the output so that was all about the long data type now let's move on and see floating data types you should use a floating point type whenever you need a number with a decimal such as 8.88 or 3.1455 float data type can store fractional numbers from this to this note that you should end the value with an f letter so let's take a small example and understand this data type in a detailed manner so here i am assigning value 88 to variable n so if we print this then we'll get this uh, output in uh, decimal form next is double data type This data type can store fractional numbers from this to this range. Note that you should end the value with the uh, D letter. So let's take an example. So here it will print the value uh, present in n variable. Now let's run the program. so here we can see the output so that was all about primitive data type and non primitive data types refer to objects and hence they are called reference types example of non primitive types include strings arrays classes interface etc so we'll talk about reference types in our upcoming tutorials so that's it for this video if you have any doubt comment us below And if you found some value in this video then make sure to subscribe to the channel and give me a thumbs up and do share this video with your friends to spread the knowledge and stay tuned for more videos